And for anyone who is wondering, that's what real punk music sounds like. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and it is a nothing cast with our pal John Stephen Walsh. Hey guys, hey cat, hey Ishi. And uh, it's been ages since we've had John on the show. Yeah, it's great to hear you again. And so instead of doing a word craft and making it all official and shit, we thought we'd just kick back and have fun. Yeah. Hey, let's kick back and have fun. <laughs> You're going to have fun like Joe Biden has fun, which is to um, suck on Jello and watch Golden Girls reruns at eight, eight at night. I don't think he's watching Golden Girls. I don't think he's doing anything that wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's putting things in weird places. Yeah. <laughs> and the nurse is saying, no, 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 like baby. All right, enough of that. So anyhow, yeah, so I just yanked down a whole bunch of movies that I've been stacking up lately. And so, you know, cool. if, if that's what you want to talk about, there was, um, I'm keeping in mind also that these are things that if someone listening wants to get them, they can probably get them on Amazon because there's some things I could talk about, but. It's not fair if you can't find it readily, you know. Well, is, my face, uh, is my face really that green? Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. It's all yep. you're, you're just you're, this... you're hulking out there, dude. Oh my god. Okay, well go ahead. I'll just uh Or are you man thinging out? Let's see. Yeah, I'm a, yes, I'm a man thing, actually. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, for the audience <laughs> to know, we're basically gonna ask John about his a handful of his favorite rare and bizarre films mm -hmm. you probably haven't heard of. Of course, yes. knowing this audience, a lot of you probably will. <laughs> well, give, well, well, Ishi, why don't you and you tell us like one a title that uh, like a movie you love that isn't that well known? Oh, that that's a very very big list. I mean, I suppose an easy one. Go on. I mean, I usually my answer for this question would be Tokyo Gore Police. That's my usual answer. Our uh, machine uh, machine. What was it? I didn't I didn't make that out. It's not really, it's not oh. an anime. It's no, a is live it, is action. About, yeah. Is it the one about the, the girl has a, she's a school girl and she has a this Gatlin gun for her, for her arm. Yeah. But uh, what I like even better is Tokyo Gore police, but that's kind of a lot to it's explain. That, so I thought I'd do something understand. different instead of my usual answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the she creature. Oh, because we were talking about it Yeah, we, we talk about that quite often. Mm -hmm. It's a great film. We like the old film, The She-Creature, which is apparently only available through MST3K right now. But oh, yeah. But, and it has uh, Lance Fuller. But, yes, uh, and it has... And are you familiar with a um, an actor named George Sanders? Back in the day, he spoke like this. He did the Shere Khan voice and the... Uh, Disney um, Jungle Book cartoon. Yes, Remember he's that? wonderful. Yeah, his brother Wait. plays. His brother plays the uh, the the English uh, dude. I'm oh. not going to be changed out of my my home. And he starts to shoot the thing, and he gets his head hit with a lobster claw. Yeah, <laughs> that's, his, that's his brother. Oh my god! Yeah, the thing he, is, that film is actually pretty good. It's very Lovecraftian, and if it had a better monster and a few better actors. I think it would have actually been a classic. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. If it didn't have the breasts it has, you wouldn't even know it exists. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in there? We're among, you're among the, friends. Uh, you're among the friends. The sea creature is a very stacked, deep one, as it, seen on the uh, poster. Art. They use they use a clip of the she creature on the beach in um, the movie. Um, oh, shoot. Um, What's the one with um, Robert Vaughn as the caveman? Teenage caveman. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a oh. clip in there in the end when they do in the whole reveal of what's really happened. And it says, like, you know, humanity went through mutations. And the she creature is one of a clip from it is one that they show oh, as an wow. example of the. Yeah. Well, they're, they're both Corman films. Yes. And they do. And they re, and Roger it was recycling long before it was, it was, it was the thing to do. It, Tom it Conway, good. by the way, is the name of the guy who's a. Uh, George Sanders' brother, and um, see the, that has see that the, that monster suit is you know from Paul Blaisdell, of course. He always seems like he does half a good suit, and then he does something bizarre to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. um, what was the one? Um, Night of the Blood Beast. Yes. <laughs> right? 
Oh it's this big God. thing, and then it has like a head like a parrot. It, it looks looked, like a sports mascot with all the fur burned off. Yeah, that somebody said a, a sports mascot on fire. Yes, and then they reused that suit in um, um, in the same Robert Vaughn movie, Teenage Caveman. At oh, the, God. The, the, at the end, they killed that thing, and you think this is the you know caveman times, and the helmet comes off, and there's an old man in there, and then he narrates to us that, you know, humanity went through nuclear war. In other words, we're in the future the whole time. We thought we were in the past, but we're actually in the future. So that sh that parrot head thing was used in like three of uh, Roger Coleman's movies. He he knew how to save a buck. God bless him. He did. Dude could pinch a penny and make Lincoln scream. Okay. Let's see what we got. So, so yeah, oh, this is a film that Kat and I like quite a bit. Yeah, love this film. Absolutely All right, this I'm going to start off with one which has had, started to slowly get um, some of the um, love that it has deserved for a long time. Mm -hmm. 2009 movie called Lake Mungo. Have you ever seen it? Nope. Lake Mungo? Amazon, yep. Uh, yep. Okay. M Mungo Jerry. Yes, it's. It, it was lumped in, and you don't know, remember those after dark horror fests where okay. they like, they put like, you know, 10 movies that didn't really get a release and they put them all out at once and said ah oh, look at all these new movies it was like it went on for like four years that it was and then they released them and this one is like the gem of the of the bunch it's about um this girl it's a fake it's a fake documentary you know like like you know, Blair Witch yes but but it, it, but what it is is it's it's it doesn't have as much shaky cam because it's about like it's like a news story like telling you, you know, this is what happened to this girl, and this girl d d disappeared. And it's very hard to tell people the most important thing about the movie, but I will just say this much. Two times in my life, twice, and I'm old, two, only two movies, I have been watching the movies, right? And in the last minutes, I, I said, holy shit, and just dropped my stuff. The first, the first time was the usual suspects. When that when that movie was getting towards the end, I'm like, oh, it was okay. But and then when you see him walking and all the pieces come together, yeah, that I thought that was fantastic. I also I still say that that's the most perfect screenplay because anything that's wrong in it, you can say, well, that's just in the way he told it because he was you know trying to think of something. Unreliable narrator. Yes, exactly. And Lake Mungo is the other one. For it, 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 when it, I mean, I thought it's good, and then at the end, it went. This is, it's, it's. You should see it if you have any interest in just from what you know the trailer shows you. You should check it out. It's one of those movies very hard to talk about though because, you know, you, you don't have want to, to talk about everyone, right, right? Exactly. Yep. So it's a it's a mockumentary. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell us what it's a yeah, mockumentary what's the about? Oh yeah, it's this this young girl. Um, she disappeared. She um, was found drowned in a lake. This it takes place in Australia, and the gist of it is that um, all the pieces don't fit. It, and she slow as it slowly goes along, you realize that there are you know it isn't just like this girl just wandered off and oh an accident. It's like she was getting involved in some strange stuff. Hanging and with, that, just, with those dingoes. I, hey. Don't no bad lingo about dingoes. No, it's it's like like that. It, it, it's one of those movies that like it, you you think it's something, but then it's turning into something else. I know that doesn't give you much, but um, it if it's supernatural. Cool. Yeah, it's not about a you know an axe murderer, and and again, there's, there's not a lot you can talk about it with without blowing it. So, uh, but I, I will stand by that recommendation. Some of the things I'm going to mention tonight, no one but me is going to like, but that one I stand by. Definitely see it. Okay. All right. Let's so, what else am I yeah. so yeah. So what, what's your next recommendation? My next recommendation. And this one, like I said, I'm, I'm, this one's easy to get. You can get this, um, on Amazon. Have you ever seen shockwaves? No. Shockwaves from 1976. <clears throat> Peter Cushing, one All year right. before, one year, <laughs> and and John Carradine. Oh, um, 
and this is this is this, this I, if if you haven't been sold by that, this will sell it. This is the Citizen Kane of Nazi zombie movies, and I say that not with cheek, not not in tongue, not in cheek. It's it's gritty. It's not you know handheld, obviously, but that's what it's, the shock waves are. These Nazi zombies that were locked in, uh, off off this island, and these tourists are just stupid enough to come along when they get out. Very, very I love that like seventies, um, like in the shot right now that you yeah. see. I love that kind of, you know, no, low contrast, kind of mushy. I, I love it. And that's Brooke Adams, who was in uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So so where do the Nazis come in here? Peter Cushing is a um, Nazi scientist who lives on this deserted island. And it's like, I can only imagine that when they made this movie, they came upon this old thing and said, don't touch it. Just leave it there. The, he's, he's living in this decayed place because, you know, he's an ex-Nazi. They don't know where he is, so he's just staying there. And he created these uh zombies and then they sunk the ship they were in when you know world war ii was ending and somehow they get out the same time that this boat of like five or six people shows up because their their boat is is messed up so they have to stop so in other words there's there's him and there's nazis nazi zombies and then there are these people come along and what do nazi zombies like to do they like to kill people so that's what they do. And it's kind of, it's very atmospheric, has a good build. And then like, the th another thing I like, the last 20 minutes is sort of like how uh, Night of the Living Dead ends. You know, it ends, you know, they end with like, a, you know, it's a slow build, but then it's like, it just goes on for like 20 minutes and everyone's trying to hide and there's no place to hide and blah, blah, blah. So I strongly recommend that. So zombies in a swamp who happen also to be Nazis. I mean, hey. 70s Grindhouse. Yep. Peter Cushing and John Carradine. <laughs> well, it, it's Peter Cushing and John Carradine and Nazi zombies. And 70s they, they, action. In, yes. in correct order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I strongly recommend it. <laughs> right. Oh, we're, we're going gonna, we're gonna to fly through these quickly if we don't ask some questions. How here. I know, really. I discover I'm... this one. Was it like, you know, late night on cable? Or... Absolutely. That, absolute, that, I, I saw that. <clears throat> Drunken in the back of a theater or something that you stumbled into? <laughs> NC, don't come. No, I, I was I'm trying to remember. That it's I saw it at like one in the morning. Um, I was, let's see. Um I had to be like 15, 16. And it's like, you know, it just so happened I flicked this, you know, switched on to one of those like channel 25, I think it was in Boston, which is, um, uh, you know, the, they show all like, you know, dumb late movies late at night just to run. And I got, I just happened to sit, to turn it on when it was beginning, which, you know, that kind of synchronicity is, is rare. Mm -hmm. And I just like sat there and, you know, after five minutes, I hadn't changed the channel, so there, and I just saw it and watched it. it. It's really the perfect movie to discover, <laughs> you know, at like two in the morning, and you just don't have the strength or the or the will to change the channel because it, I had no expectations for it, obviously, and it just I just thought it was fantastic, and uh, it still holds up. And it also has another good thing, which was you know this was made in '76, but the director did a um, commentary track, um, as well as. <clears throat> uh fred olin ray oh wow yeah they both do they both do the commentary track together yeah i kind of miss the uh the, the day of uh cable when you know mm -hmm. saturday or weekday even after midnight mm -hmm. you find you would find the weirdest shit yep i mean so there was this period in which sci-fi didn't just run reruns of their crappy movies after midnight yeah they used to actually run weird films mm-hmm mm -hmm. I don't think well, this is a zombie movie anymore. No, this isn't. This isn't. This is another. You're watching another uh, trailer for something else. I'm not <laughs> complaining. I'm just you yeah, know, pointing that out. It's, somebody write down the name of this movie, just you know, so we can complain. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the. Uh, that's definitely something that um, we have lost. Uh, with you know, it, you can get anything you want on demand. It's like, well, I liked things that weren't on demand. I like things that I kind of like 
there are so many movies I saw that way. Did you ever see The Last Dinosaur? Oh. I think we talked about this. It was in, it's a 70s movie. Um, and it has one of the most awesome performances in any um, genre movie by Richard Boone, who was an actor. I'm not sure if you are familiar with his name, but he was he spent his whole career playing cowboys and being drunk. OK, and in this one, it's like you can tell he just his drunkenness had gone to a stage where he just like included that in his choices. And you watch him yelling for like two hours and and dinosaurs in men in suit dinosaurs and it's good it's good it's not like so bad it's good it's no no it's good <laughs> wow uh, you guys are gonna give me like one for every three i do you know <laughs> well okay, okay. then, uh, then, then uh, i will i will uh play the uh trailer here to tokyo gore police i don't think we'll get in trouble for this okay <laughs> No. Share, this, share this tab. Share this tab. Oh, there you go. There we go. Mm. I like yeah, so. She is so freaking hot. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, Tokyo Gore Police. Uh, that is part just, of the uh, Tokyo it's the first, show. Yeah. This the first thing I've written down tonight. Tokyo Gore Police. Yeah. Came out of uh, the uh, era in which they were this handful of studios were pumping out all these bizarre Gonzo. Uh, Bloodfest films mm -hmm. Ooh. that uh, were meant to be funny. And the thing is, is this one's kind of a cut above the rest, where the rest of them generally are just played for laughs. This one actually has a legit story to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's got this weird balance of actually a very dark story with this over the top uh, violence and gore yeah. and dark, twisted humor. Mm hmm. Like the and trauma, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder that and weirder. To me. And, and the the strip bar alone <laughs> is reason enough to see this, because they go into a bar, and it's a, you know, a, a strip club, except the stripping is so fucking weird. I mean, would you have a snail woman come out from uh, Uzumaki? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah she, she's oh. actually supposed to be a reference to Uzumaki. And oh, yeah. that's on my uh, that's on my pile, by the way. Uzumaki. And, uh, yeah, this things just keep getting weirder and weirder, and the and then the finale of all these weird strippers is they bring this one up and it's covered under a blanket, and they pull it off, and it's a human flesh chair. Mm -hmm. With eyes, and it pisses all over the audience. <laughs> oh, there we go. So it's a regular weekend at the Pelosi house, right? <laughs> Ooh, it's, it, it, all right. You got to stop this because I'm already sold. I yeah. want to see it. I want to see it. Good, and, that's a good call, as far as I can say. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like this it. one, again, I will repeat, is a cut above the rest. It actually has a pretty coherent story. And a character arc, it's not merely played for laughs. Well, see, I like that because the first uh, like Asian movies uh, that I ever really got into ages ago was uh, John Woo movies. And the climax to um, A Better Tomorrow 2. Yeah. I, I just thought like the, I, I died and went to movie heaven. Do you, do you remember how the, this is the second one I'm talking about? The, I mean, the first one was good, but do you remember how the second one ends? It's like 20 minutes of three guys with guns taking on up a, a mansion with like 300 people with guns. And it's just like, I, it was just like, I thought, I think my eyes were mo moistening. I was like, this is beautiful. It's <laughs> if you haven't seen that, have you seen it? Uh, Better no. tomorrow too. <gasps> oh, you must Me see too. it. You must see it. And, oh, and guess what? Great. There's not, there's nothing I can say, right? Like, don't tell me about the ending. It'll ruin it. No, it's that good. It's the ending is like getting hit by a truck, but in a good way. Well, I was going to say the one other thing about this film, Tokyo Gore Police, is the mm. other strength is the actress who stars in it. Yeah. Ikishina, who was in Audition. Yes. Which is a film, if you haven't seen, you need to. That's another one we should talk about, actually. <laughs> we, that's on the list. She, I actually, that has been on my list to watch forever and I've never seen it. It's uh, my people I know, people know who like movies like, you know, more normal than I do have seen it, but I haven't seen it for whatever reason. You need to see Audition. Audition should. 
is interesting because the first half of the film yes plays like a legit rom romantic comedy yeah right and it right. does not really give any hint that it's mm -hmm. going to take a different path and it's even got this quirky concept of a lonely businessman who, who wants right. a woman holds an audition for mm -hmm. a, a show mm -hmm. that doesn't really exist with the thought of this is how we'll find the perfect woman did, he finds did, her did, did you see um henry portrait of a serial killer yeah yes i've seen okay. that a few times mm -hmm. Okay, just I mean I know it's it, I just mentioned it because this reminded me of it of something about it. So if anyone out there hasn't seen it, make sure you see it. But yeah, audition has been perpetually on my list. So you know I'll and get to it eventually. I, I'll also say I'll just say this: audition is one of those films that before I saw it, everybody I talked to said, "Oh my god, it's so bloody! It's so disgusting! It's so mm. gory! It, you know, it's over the top." It's one of those films where your brain fills in the gaps. There isn't much right. to see, actually. There mm -hmm. is not much um, on-screen gore. It's right. their, um, the, um, how much they imply your brain fills it in. And it just make, it makes your skin crawl. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's interesting how many people think this is a horribly you know, gory film, and it isn't. Yeah. And, and what, what Catch has described is what we call art. You know, it's mm -hmm. that's what's in these movies is there. That's the difference between this and, you know, some stupid movie that just chop things get chopped up. It's like, no, it gets in your head. And so, in other words, it's it's like you're taking part in the creation in a certain way. And and mm -hmm. it's to me that has just so much more to it than like Santa Claus with an axe chopping people up. It's like, all right, whatever. You know, it's so though it's it's not necessarily saying it's a psychological movie. I mean, because you can do that with any kind of horror. And that's where I love craft, of course, is um, regarded all this time after he died, because you have to do a lot of blank filling with, with Lovecraft. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever see the resurrection? I mean, the resurrected. No, resurrected. that's um, Dan O'Bannon. Just yeah. wait until you get it up. Um, 91. Um, I believe um yes that's it um it's 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 good okay but there's a stretch in it where they go explore this tunnel under somebody's house which to me that i'd say it's 10 15 minutes long and that stretch is for me the best lovecraft on screen that has been done yet really yeah because it it doesn't what no, I'm not going to say anymore. It, it's better it, than uh, Color Out of Space. <laughs> I love Color Out of Space, which I think is fantastic, and that, and it's great. But that one scene in the Resurrected, to me, it's like th th this is the first time I feel like I'm like inside a Lovecraft story because again, it doesn't show you a lot, but it shows you the right things. But this is good. The Resurrected is good, though. This is Dan O'Bannon. Yeah. Yeah. So he directed it after um, Return of the Living Dead. And then uh, he just kind of like was like, um, I'm not getting the fulfillment I think I should get out of Dragon. So he went back to screenwriting, um, it, which is too bad because he made two pretty good movies as director. Yeah. And uh, of course, but, I, yeah, I, I, check that I understand out. that if you're making a low budget film uh, for a studio, the the hell that the fight that you have to go through makes being a screenwriter look easy <laughs> apparently yeah yeah if it's it's interesting if like you see video of oban and um he 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 just he, he seemed very um i i you know i, I want to say honest but that's not really it it's almost like it's almost like he was resigned to the bad parts of Hollywood before he even made any movies. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like when, when, you know, after um, Dune collapsed, he came home and, you know, uh, started writing Alien. It's it's almost like, you know, we're going to sell it to Corbin and, you know, run with the money we're going to get from it. And it's, I think if you, if you listen to interviews with him, it's like he, it, you know, he of course admires Giger, but, he felt something over Ridley Scott, like he, you know, slams the producers of Alien quite a bit for certain reasons, but he always says good things about Scott because it was like, 
he made it better than what even I thought it was going to be. And I thought, you know, I'm going to throw this stuff in there and they're never, they're never going to let me make it. But I think he, he, I mean, the, the two of them just collided at just the right point, which is rare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Check that out. The resurrected. It's a good flick. How about you, Kat? Name yeah. one. Uh, Name human one. Lanterns. Human Lanterns. That is a good film. Yeah. Talk about human that. Human Lanterns. Human Lanterns. Human Lanterns is a 1970 something. Uh, or is it? Is it 82? Oh, it was 82. I'm wrong. Uh, 1982 uh, Chinese film, uh, Hong Kong um, uh, film. And the premise is that you have these two uh, nobles in a town that have a feud going on uh, between each other. One is a, uh, you know, is a very uh, patronly uh, gentleman um, who, you know, feels that it's his duty to take care of the town. But at the Mm -hmm. same time, he definitely knows that, uh, you know, he is a noble and that he is in charge. So, you know, status. And the other one is this, uh, you know, young buck who thinks he's hot shit and who thinks that he can treat everybody, especially the other noble, like absolute total garbage. And uh, the Lantern Festival is coming up uh, and the young fop decides he's going to hire uh, this uh, um, older gentleman who is known for making beautiful lanterns to make his lantern for the festival uh, so that he can have the most beautiful lantern of them all. That guy hates the other two and decides that uh, he's going to make his lantern out of people. <laughs> and it goes from there. That's the that's the broad story. It's actually right. a lot deeper. It's a, definitely a story about revenge. It's a story about um, about pride, a story about, um, you know, basically watch who you uh, shit on because they're going to come back after you. Mm-hmm. And um, it's okay. also a story about who's got the most grand lantern. Exactly. Whose lantern is more fabulous? Yeah, who has the most fabulous lantern of them all? The and, price uh, of having the fabulous lantern. And, you know, it, it sounds goofy, but uh, quite frankly, there are scenes that are that are downright disturbing in the film. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like, you know, when you see, uh, you know, people getting flayed. Um, in mm. order to make uh, in order to make the uh, leather for the lanterns, the uh, the lantern maker also will dress up as a uh, as a monkey spirit and uh, will terrorize people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, and it's all practical effects. It's very little. Mm. What you know, there's no wire foo. There's these are all actual stunts. There's, a, there's wire foo. Well, there's it. there's some wire foo, but the shit that he does, it's like no, he's actually jumping around doing that. No, nobody can jump two stories. No, they ran it backwards. Oh, is that how they did that? Yeah. Oh, okay. They ran the footage backwards. You've watched it more than me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, every, everything you you were just describing is, uh, that's I, fi- I you find that in a whole ton of these Asian ghost stories. They're all about basically karma coming yeah. back and biting you. Did you ever see Quite On? No. KW, K, Kate, you have not oh, K W A I D A N. K W A I D A N. D A D A N. D is in Dick. Okay. Dick. Delta Alpha. I had an uncle Dick, so you clean your mouth up, young man. Let's see. Uh, oh. That is the that is the one. In the first place, you you have to see it. In the second place, what it is is um. Um, it, it, it's five uh, stories, so it's five different, and it's all oh. filmed in on stage, in 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 the stage. There is no, um, you're not out in the real world at all. They just did all this with sets, which is and, one of the things that's impressive about these old Hong Kong films. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. And and this was a, it, it was it, it was a huge deal. It was like the color and everything. They, they and and all all four parts of it. Are about what basically what you would cat was just saying which is you know uh, you do something bad and it bites you in the ass and uh i mean it, it's funny um in that you know it, with modern day uh 
we know the uh, Chinese to be very prideful and and uh, materialistic and materialistic. But how many of their stories mm -hmm. have quite the opposite uh, message? Well, these films were being made in Hong Kong, not the mainland. <laughs> uh, that's true, but but still. Well, th well, this one is Japanese, and oh, it, we, need, Japanese. we need to see those. Oh, okay. We definitely need. And, okay. And the visuals are amazing. The stories are made. The story's amazing. Um, and uh, uh, and it's just this. It, I mean, the music is done by this this awesome composer Toru Takamitsu, which you've probably heard of. Um, he scores one of the scenes with wood. I don't mean percussion. He has wood, and he's breaking it in his hands. And that's Ooh. the sound that that's the music. <laughs> it's, that's it's just, cool. it's very inventive. It's very, uh, it, 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 visuals are great. I mean, you can, it's a great movie if you can't go to sleep and you just want to, you know, turn off the sound and watch eye candy, but you should listen to it too. But it's a fantastic movie. The other one is a black and white one from the six called Oni Baba. We have Oni Baba. Oh, all right. Then we're on the same track then mentally. Yep. That's a fantastic movie. Um, that's yeah. that's on my. I'm letting myself watch that soon because there are certain movies I really like and I watch all the time and I watch them out. So there are certain movies I kind of I don't want to watch that one because I'll get too familiar with it. Have you seen Blind Woman's Vengeance? I have not. That's a fun one. That one's a great one. Blind. Um, a woman. Um basically inherits uh, a Yakuza clan after uh, her father dies. And she's, hmm. she's the only one of, of that family left. Uh, it's curse. It's blind woman's oh, curse. Sorry. Blind woman's curse. Thank you. Um, okay. And uh, it, it's a great film because it, it starts with her clan um, doing a siege against another clan's um, stronghold. Mm -hmm. And it's just an absolute slaughter. And then it takes you, um, you know, X many years later. And it's, and you find that, yes, they, they are Yakuza. Yes, they are thugs. Yes, they are, you know, gangsters. But they are keeping a certain amount of order in this one particular town. Um, so, yes, they are engaged in, in certain um, illegal acts, but it's better than what some of the other clans are engaging in. And so Ooh. you have a warfare with another clan who is trying to bring opium into the town. And mm. her clan is like, oh, hell no, we're not having opium here. You know, that, that destroys people. We're not having that. Um, and so it's basically drug warfare. And the other clan uh, winds up hiring this uh, blind swordswoman who is like just an absolute beast with a sword. She is really freaking good. And it turns out that in that siege at the very beginning, she was blinded by the leader, the, the female leader of, of the other Yakuza clan. And so she mm -hmm. wants revenge. So that's where the, the uh, title comes from. But the female Yakuza, she's not a bad person. She She's done bad things, but she herself is not a bad person. And she is actually wracked with guilt over some of the choices that she's had to make in order to keep um, her clan together. And mm -hmm. so it's a lot of um, morality questions. And then the ending, I was not expecting. I mean, of, of course, you have to have the final showdown. But, uh, you know, so that I'm not giving away. But uh, the ending, I 100% was not expecting. And Please. when we, we caught that on Amazon, they had it for free for a short time. Mm -hmm. And um, as as soon as we were done watching it, we're like, okay, we need to own this. Did you ever have you guys seen Horrors of Malformed Men? Uh, no, I saw Bar One brought that up. It's by uh, a director whose last name is Ishi. Ah, Tiro Ishi. Um, it, it, and I only bring it up because one, it's 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 okay, it's good, it's not great, but it was good, but. It's based, they basically, I'm not sure if it was officially or kind of like, you know, inspired by 
um, of some of the work of um, his name is you've heard of Rampo at Agawa Rampo. Uh, Do you know him? I may know what he's done, but the name doesn't sound familiar. Well, he's mostly known as by because he was a he was a writer, but you know some movies have drawn off of him. You, you'll find it if you say his name real fast, you can figure out which American writer he uh, named himself after, which is Edgawa Ranpo. Edgo while <laughs> Ron Popeil? <laughs> yeah, Ron, <laughs> Ron Popeil. Popeil. Exactly. Yes, exactly. But he, I thought of him because you mentioned uh, one of the one of the ones uh, that you just mentioned uh, uses a human chair. He wrote a short story called The Human Chair. Oh, and okay. It's it's got nothing to do with what you just described, and this is another one. It's like you got to well, just, read it. One, just one, read it. Just read it. That's why he brought it up. Okay. Said, yeah. He said it was a reference. Yeah, Bar One's a lot like you. He's like an encyclopedia of mm -hmm. facts about film, especially obscure ones. Oh, cool. No, I'm, I'm not looking at the comments. I'm, so I'm just, uh, 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 I hope everybody's throwing in their, their ideas because I want to get something too. I want to get some mm -hmm. new movies too. I've only seen about 10,000 movies this year so far. So, sorry, down. Wolf, but uh, Female Prisoner 701 Scorpion has a lot of rape in it. And it's oh. kind of a policy with Cat. With <laughs> there has to be a point to the rape. Yeah. I haven't I haven't gotten her to sit down and watch uh, Snowblood yet. No, no, but you finally convinced me that, you, yeah, that, it's that worth I saying. should watch it. It's so. a very good film. Lady Snowblood, yeah. Very much yeah. worth seeing. Yeah, now it's just a matter of us sitting down and watching it. <clears throat> okay, I got <clears throat> let me give you let me give you this one. You guys so you see far one already now. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he did. They, oh, I can see. Oh, there I can see him now. Thanks. Um, okay. <clears throat> this is a movie I thought, I really thought people would pick up on this movie, but it doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. It's called Citadel. And I'm trying to see what year it's. It's Irish. I think it's Irish. Where the hell is this damn movie from? Yeah. Uh, Citadel? Okay. Yes. Citadel. And um, uh, C -I -T. is it CIT C -I or CID? Yep, CIT A D E L Citadel. I knew that. There we go. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it right there. Um, oh. it had what I found really interesting about it was, um, it's a the, the hero is a he's he's like he's from like the bottom of of the social line you know he's 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 got his girl they're gonna get together they're gonna have a kid and you know they basically uh, he ends up taking care of this baby by himself and he's like he doesn't have like you know the, the glorious apartment that every character in hollywood movies has you know he's like living in like a um basically a project and um at night there were these somethings running around and it's a very high crime area. So like the cops just are not responsive and such. And one of one night his, um, his kid gets taken. And so now he has to come out of his shell <laughs> and do something about it. And again, it's it, the, the nature of the, of the threat is uh, it is, you know, supernatural in, uh, it, 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 but, uh, it, it just really, it does. A, it's an urban. It's an urban spooky movie, and um, the whole situation where he goes into the citadel is really well done. They like really play it out. It isn't just like okay, ten minutes left now. Let's do it. You know, it's like no. It's like he goes in and you set. You see, and it just gets worse and worse. And at the same time, so much of the movie is like yeah, people do have to live this way in reality and uh i just think it's such a terrific flick and um it just seems to have like not gotten any um you know any uh, traction hmm. and you said this is an irish film i think it's irish it might be i could swear that brian cox was in it but I'm so do to... the kids have pitch black eyes no Okay, I was I was wondering if these were the black eyed children. Mm. Well, the children are scary enough though. That, um, and the music was done by Tom and Andy, who've done a few horror flicks. Um, yeah, it's, I could, who the hell is in it? 
Like, is oh. this in the uh, same vein as a uh, was it thing in the hole? A hole in the ground. Hole in the it? ground. Hole in the ground. Um, have you seen that film? I don't think I have. That's that's an hole Irish uh, horror film. Yeah, this. I've seen a couple of them, and um, for some reason I can't. Um, uh, I can't remember any of the goddamn names of them. I don't know what that means. If <laughs> All my grandparents came from Ireland, so you'd think I'd, you know, I'd be able to remember some of these names. But I get a little bit of that brogue, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but you should, <laughs> th you know what? Another thing, <clears throat> and it, it was the reason I picked this is because of what Kat just said about rape, which is, um, th th it's got nothing to do with rape, by the way. The movie has mm -hmm. nothing to do with rape, but it treats the characters very humanely. It's like you really feel for this guy, you know? It's like. He, you know, he's just a, you know, he's a, he's poor, at, but he and his girlfriend are going to make a go of it. And I'm not really spoiling anything because that's the whole setup is very early on. Um, and then he's left, you know, in a shitty apartment, in a shitty part of town. He's, he's got all these phobias and he's trying to bring up a kid. And it's just like scenes of him, like carrying the, the stroller upstairs you know what I mean? And it's like, you just sit there like, oh, I hope he, I hope he does it, you know? And, um, I guess I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a character phase because it just, it just really struck me, but you know, he's, he's a, he's a single white male. So, you know, I guess he's verboten just suggesting <laughs> this may get you banned, <laughs> but check well, it out. That's kind of the nature of this channel at this point is <laughs> things that will get you banned. Yeah. And since I brought that up, I'm going to throw in another one. I think you may have seen it. Did you see, um, um, oh, for God's sake, um, the hell is it? oh, raw meat. Did you see that? No, but raw that sounds meat. like something I should have seen. I, um, I want to think. It's, it was made in the seventies by an American director. Um, uh, yeah. Donald Ple Donald Pleasance is in it, and he's fantastic in it. He's he plays a pot. He plays a good guy, and he just plays this cop who's like kind of. He's just like enjoys his job. It's you know he's just this strange little guy. Anyway, and what it's about is um, there's these um beings that live that well they're creatures that live in these uh, underneath um, uh, underneath London, and they're coming out and taking people. Who are like late at night they're alone on the platform and eating them and that's the setup this th this character his girlfriend disappears so he's got to find he wants to find out what's going on if you like 70s you like horror this is it um the first are they like chuds or are they like Morlocks? they're like pe they're people they're like people who i don't want to tip tip too much of it but they're like humanoid people um but it's the first deep director of photography job for uh, Alex Thompson, who did Excalibur. And, oh, uh, yeah. That is a film. So if you're looking at the clips right now, it's like, well, this is as far from Excalibur as you can get. So that, um, but uh, I suggest th this director went on to do a movie called Buried Alive in America mm -hmm. in the early 80s, which was co written by Dan O'Bannon. Um, but yeah, Raw Meat, I, I, I suggest it. it's. Uh, it, we'll notice a lot of these are about mood. I'm I'm huge on mood. <laughs> it's okay. like, so yeah, check that one out. If that's the case, if if you're huge on mood, I am. Irish film. Hole in the ground. Hole in the ground. I already now, wrote that. I already wrote that down. I am playing the trailer. Oh, uh, good. It. Oh, there it is. Okay is very much an Irish film. It's uh, about a changeling. Mm -hmm. uh, it delivers everything. Um, oh God, what was that movie? Babadook? Yeah, everything the Babadook promised, this film delivers. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sold already because <laughs> I, I did like Babadook. I was not as crazy about it as everyone else's. And um, so that's a good, that's a good wreck right there. And this care, it is, this film is carried on character and mood. Mm-hmm. And just the sheer sense of isolation out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And how just little things start to make you worry. Mm -hmm. And the way that it, it follows along with the uh, tale of the changeling works really, really well. So, yeah, 
that would be one oh. I recommend. Again, it's one okay. that people just don't know about. Ooh, looks, this does look good. All right, I'm not looking at the trail. I'm looking away because I don't want to see any more spoilers. Oh, okay. I'm gonna see. That looks good, though. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good wreck. That's a good wreck. Um, yeah. Let's see. Have you ever heard of Aswang? <clears throat> Which I believe is... Let's see. I'm trying to see what country it's from. I'm sorry. Because that because an Aswang is a... Um, and I swear I'm I'm swear I'm not mispronouncing box, it. Uh, the box uh, the uh, the box uh, quote says this movie is nasty. <laughs> yes, oh that's Joe Bob Briggs. I'm looking. I'm holding the DVD right now. Yes, that's Joe Bob Briggs. Yeah, um, this is another of those movies that I'm like, I'm like I can't believe people haven't heard of this. It's um, basically about a. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just making it. Right. Sorry. Continue. Oh, did did you see it? No, um, I was making sure it didn't oh. look like we were sharing uh, this particular entry, so I was just making sure. Okay, um, yeah, it would. Uh, I'll, I'm I'm holding the DVD. I'll just read right now. It says this amazing gore fest was the first horror film ever screened at the Sundance Film Festival. It was immediately picked up for U.S. distribution, retitled the Un the Unearthing, and cut for an R release. Nervous video change res refused to carry the film, and the shocker all but disappeared. So, what it's about is a, is a girl um, is being paid to um, be a Filipino paid. vampire. Thank you. That the, thank you. I couldn't remember it. Um, a girl in America. It's in, it takes place in America. This girl is she's going to be a um, uh, surrogate for uh, this rich couple, um, but she doesn't know that something is going to be impregnating her, and it ain't the husband and it is nasty and the uh, cat may not like it <laughs> based on the based because i mean i'm not uh, it's it it go it goes there i'll just put it i'm just gonna here's it the thing there. you're gonna have to tell us which one there are three different films with the same name the one that you have up right now okay the one from at. 1994 because mm -hmm. there was a recent one more recent in 2018 this was written and produced and directed by Wari, I can't even pronounce his first name, but he's American. Mar and Barry Polterman. Barry Polterman, M-A-N-N. -N. That's the co-director. So do we actually ever see like the floating head with a bunch of organs? Just you, you see you see stuff. Um, yeah, I know what you're referring to. That's what, what, what the... That's, I think, the... Uh, the similar but different creature uh, yeah um i know what you're talking about um i think but like there are more of those movies than you'd, than you'd think I, I once went oh yeah there's a movie with the head and the organs uh, attached floating to the end and there were like three mystic different movies like that. Yeah, yeah the mystic knights in bali N knights of bali yep that's it that's the one i think um I think Red Letter Media did something on that one. Yeah, Red Letter Media did. A couple of other people did too, but uh, yeah, mainly uh, Red Letter Media. <laughs> you know, if I if we um, we're coming, um, I see we're coming up on one hour, but um, to give you something to think about. <clears throat> All right. It just it's uh, it's kind of interesting to me that me coming on tonight talk about weird movies mm -hmm. was Ishi's idea because it just so happens. I am putting together, I'm going to start doing, um, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to start in, at YouTube or Rumbler, 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 but I decided finally I will do something in video, but it will be something hey. that isn't being done. And what it is, is I just want to do like five minutes, just like five minutes long. And all it is, is each one is, this is something I want to recommend. That's it. There's not going to be any... Oh, let's bash this movie for not, none of that. We have too much of that. And I like I that stuff. And I like that stuff, but we've got too much. So, you know, and based on you listening to me and my interest and such, I'm hoping one of you can find a, think of a good, a good name for that. Because I've been calling it Two to Midnight because the first ones I did were two minutes long. <laughs> but I'm like, well, I need to have a little more wiggle room than that. So it's going to be about noir and horror, and it's going to be good stuff. That's what it's going to be. There's not going to be any, I bash this thing. It's going to be everything you see on it will be something you can say, well, I know John likes this. That's, you know, I'm not saying it's great, that's it, but I like it. So give that, let that roll around your head for a while. 
Well, I thoroughly encourage you to do this show. Yeah, that gets me really excited. Well, because I have a lot of movies that, you know, I mean, well, how many yeah, times I mean, do we see J.J. Abrams roasted? I mean, seriously. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, what I will say that I am surprised no one has taken advantage of the mystery box yet. Because <laughs> there, there could be a great skit where you redo the ending of well, Seven. Oh, What's God. in the mystery box? Oh, What's in the box? That's the best idea. I where's, where's the GoFundMe? Take my money. Yeah. <laughs> What's in the fucking box? <laughs> It's a mystery. It's a mystery. No, it doesn't no, matter what's in the box. No, and then you cut to uh, Cooney from uh, UHF. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I think today, if they if they made seven and they open it and, and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's head is in there, the audience would be like, "That's it." <laughs> oh, yeah. he killed her. Originally, they were gonna. They tried to convince him to do it with the open the box as one of the dog a dog's head in it that <laughs> was Brad Pitt's dog. And I was like, in the first place, yeah, that would get you more hate than you know killing a person but and brad pitt basically told him no way i signed on to this saying i will do it if we use the ending and that's one thing that um fincher sure. has like long hey. talked about which is that you know pitt and um morgan freeman were like this is the ending i signed up for that's what we're gonna do well it nice. wouldn't have been impactful otherwise no it right wouldn't have been. I mean, they, they were trying to say, like, well, what if there's a TV monitor in there and on it you can see that she's, like, tied up somewhere and in trouble? What and... is this, Saw, like, 20 years <laughs> previous? Shit. Why would they want to change it? I mean, is it just their pussies? Pussies. They, well, yeah, exactly. That's it. And and Fincher, well, this is I'm telling you all this from, it's right off the DVD commentary track. Well, and... didn't uh, Spacey himself have to fight to not have his name anywhere um, so that it would be a shock when he showed up. Uh, I'm well. Uh, I don't. I haven't heard th that, but I will say that I think that that was great because you know he wasn't you know like a superstar yet, but he was like well known. So when it turns out to be him, it's like oh, this guy. Yeah, who knew that he was actually playing himself in that film? Exactly. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't really that much of a stretch, was it? No. no. But when, when I saw, Method acting. Yes. I saw, I ran out to see seven the day it opened and I was really enjoying it. Right. And they get towards the end. And I was like, Oh, so I see where the end is going to be. There's going to be, you know, shoot. I bet you Morgan Freeman and I die or something like that. And then when they bring the box, okay, this is when, you know, the guy with the van brings the box. I went, no, they're not going to do that. And they did it. It's like, you know, that, that moment, if you watched, yeah. The DVD, right? You know, now you'll see that <clears throat> when Morgan Freeman is about to open the box, they cut all the music out. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're just hearing wind, and then he opens it, and he's st still no music. Yeah. And he just, and then what they do is, if you watch it, it's very clever. They do a quick cut to the helicopter, right? And then they cut to Morgan Freeman, and so whip pan, it goes from left to right, and he turns, and the music starts going bum, bum. It's like it's this very staccato with the whole. It's it's an amazing cue. The music and and Morgan Freeman's face sell the whole thing because it's like mm -hmm. he fucking did it. Oh my god! And then in the end, you know, is of course you know Morgan Freeman is. If you shoot him, then he will win. And at the same time, it's like you want him to do it, but you know that you're falling right into his hands to do it. It was fantastic. I just I still think that the ending is one of the best of any thriller. Yeah, and that's why we remember it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If it had been a dog, I think we'd all start laughing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the worst third well, act blue uh, balls uh, ever. Um, uh, what Fincher famously on the track, he says, you know, the, they were trying to get me to, you know, deal with the ending. And I said to them, okay, this is what I think. 25 years from now, there can be people standing around talking about movies they like. And one of them is going to say, I saw this movie one night, like two in the morning, where they open up a box at the end and there's a head in it. And they all go, oh, yeah, the hit the box movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's And that guy said, I, I can see that. Yeah, I get it. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I get it. Have you guys ever seen Ravenous? Ravenous? Uh, is this yeah. Cronenberg? No, that's okay. um, Guy Pierce and David Arquette. No. As by, directed by Antonia Bird, who she was a she's a um, Australian director, I think. Um, let's see. It's basically, 
a um it's i think it takes place in the late 1800s i think um it's like in a it's on a um outpost and they're being <laughs> musically and they're bicycles god bless you oh, thank and you. and they're and they're not and the people they're fighting aren't indians they're um cannibals so in a way it's a little like in the vein of um bone tomahawk but oh um but this came out 20 years ago it's uh it's really worth seeing uh, i gotta see this then because i enjoyed bone tomahawk but damn they take the scenic route to getting to the point <laughs> this is true but i'm okay with that sometimes and and i think that the ending of bone tomahawk it it, it, it was worth the wait it was like how much is this guy gonna endure <laughs> Uh, it it was the first time I saw it. The second time, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna. I really need to hit the fast forward button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you... and that's the, that's the problem is that you know when you have a film that's built on tension, it is hard to be able to maintain it, um, it with subsequent viewings. Right. Um, and, you know, Bone Tomahawk, unfortunately, I don't think holds up on subsequent viewings, uh, um, except for Kurt Russell's uh, acting, because my right. God, he's so good in that film. Yes, he, he uh, is. He's but, really good. Did you ever see um, The Reflecting Skin? No. This is a Canadian movie. It's by a guy named Philip Ridley, who is he's done a few movies. Um mm -hmm. And Viggo Mortensen was in it. And this was, oh. um, I'm trying to remember when it came out. I want to say, I think it was the 90s, the late 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time finding the date that it was produced on. Oh, 1991. Sorry. Um, long story short, uh, it's like this uh, rural town, this, this, this strange little little boy. And his house is out in the middle of nowhere, you know, among the, the wheat and all that. And his brother comes home from uh, the war. Um, Viggo Mortensen is his brother. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> he starts falling for this woman who lives alone. And the little boy is convinced, <coughs> excuse me, that this woman is a vampire. You and know what? I have seen this film. Oh, you have? Yeah. Although it wasn't under this name. It was under a different name. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, I caught it on uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked it. Oh, God, they're showing that scene. Yeah, that <laughs> you, was You, you remember what happens. <laughs> yeah, I remember. It's, um, it's, it's, the, I, I can't remember who said it, but they said this is the best David Lynch movie David Lynch didn't make. Yeah, <laughs> I agree completely. Oh, that's a good one. And, Another one of the, I'm trying to rush because I know you're, uh, you're pressed for time. <clears throat> now, this is a more well-known movie, but I wonder if people have watched it. Have you ever seen Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia? Yes. Okay. Did you like it? Um, to be perfectly honest, I know I've watched it all the way through. I don't remember a single moment of it. Well, I'm just I'm just remembering something and in, and in, about this movie. And it's very strange to me that like three of the last movies that I have mentioned since cat brought up rape have rape in them so i know what the hell that means but it's it's here but um long story short um warren oates who gives the best performance of his entire career is this down in his luck piano player in mexico and um it's mexican basically a warlord uh his um daughter gets knocked up by the, by her boyfriend who is now you know brought shame to the family so he is going to give a whole ton of money to whoever can bring him any proof, bring him his head, just his head, not the whole him, just his head. And so this loser thinks this is the time, this is the chance he's going to, he's going to make his big payday and he and his, he's going to marry his Mexican girlfriend and he's going to be a big man now. And, um, it, it's, it's, it's a fan. It's, it's just a great dark gritty, uh, character study and Chris Christopherson's in it too is a very bad person. As demonstrated two seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get away from this. But all right. So uh, 
How about any uh, any more you guys want to uh, recommend? I mean, I still uh, have a ton yeah, more, but I have an entire library. We could go on forever, oh but uh, I know we probably should save some for. Yeah, we can do this again. Day. Yeah, I mean, until we can get uh, writers' room or uh, WordCraft back up and running mm -hmm. uh, properly. Oh, you don't, you don't do those anymore. Uh, I did, I'd like to, but. Um, Frankly, my functionality as a human being right now is limited, and I'm yeah. putting all of my energy towards writing first. Yeah. And unfortunately, I just don't have the energy to do everything else. I hear you. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. I, um, you know, not to get started when trying to wrap up, but I, I went through a very bad um, period with uh, writing and health. And um, for whatever reason, I mean, I have theories, but uh, lately I've been writing, uh, like in the last month, I've written like 130,000 words on a book that of short stories that is going to only be like 60,000 words. So I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm when you were like, was it, I want to say it was, it was uh, Faulkner who said, when my horse is running, I don't stop her to give her sugar. It's like, yeah. you know, when, when you're in that mindset, just keep going. And I hope you do that. I hope you, you know, just keep ripping. And at the end of the end, the end of all of it, you'll have that to show for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, hopefully uh, plans will follow through. Mm -hmm. uh, as I've said, I have had the audience be kind enough to uh, proofread mm -hmm. uh, nine chapters of Boobs of Steel, and I'm going to try and get them published as articles first as I finish the book up. And my two top picks for the, where I'd like it to show up is a series of articles is either the uh, Sargon's Lotus Eaters mm -hmm. or the Post-Millennial. I think one of those two would probably be a good place. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'll oh, I'll check that out. Well, you so know. That's uh, one aim. Yeah. I have been working on Siege Engine, and then we've got the Pulp Anthologies. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've drawn close enough to say, or should we keep it secret still? Um, no. Uh, lead, lead, us, lead, us, lead us on some more. Don't, no, don't okay. pull it out. Okay, we're going to cock tease you. <laughs> Well, it's it's interesting that you guys are working on original stuff, but also the reprint stuff. And I'm writing short stories, which are basically going to compose a, uh, you know, a, a, a pulp a pulp magazine of their own, because um, they're um, all the stories are horror or science fiction stories uh, with very much like wokeness and cancel culture in mind. And I'm I'm starting to think it's going to be a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be because. Once you, if to anyone who's writing and you have problems with writing, <clears throat> just spend a day writing ex precisely what you want to write, like something you will never show anyone else. And man, it's like you break that dam and you suddenly get it. You're like, ah, this is the way I'm supposed to feel. I don't think you have that problem. I'm just saying somebody might. Yeah. Well, uh. I think that's a very good, uh, you know, way to do it. Like I've got a story... Actually, I have two stories that I've probably rewritten like three or four times. And it's just me overthinking, well, what will audience think? And it's just like, no, I just need to get it out there. You know, if I just yeah. say I'm writing it for myself, I, it probably would be print worthy right now. So, well, well, there's, well, there's different ways of doing that. Like there is, I mean, I, I think we've talked about this before and sorry if I'm boring everybody with repeats, but yeah. I've worked with kids who've had issues and just writing it. Like they don't, they write about it. They don't like, you know, they get into it. Once they see the, the results, like after one or two nights, they're like, no, I want to keep writing. They're never going to show it to me. They're never going to show it to the teachers, their parents. It's only for them. Just writing it is a breakthrough. And I just think that's, you know, there's so many things if you have, if you're a frustrated writer out there or anything, just, just, just write something that only you will see and then step back. And I bet you'll find a way to say, well, if I just do this, this, and this, like change proper names, for example, then you've got, you've created something. And if not, Hey, if nobody ever gets to read it, that's fine. But just, that's the first thing you gotta, you gotta write and you gotta finish what you write. Get us way off topic now. And someday, someday, if you finish your stories, you too can be like Richard Steele. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can, I can only dream. All right, one last one I'm going to throw in. Um, this is the one I told Ishii about today. I can't 
Uh, it's called The Demons Among Us. And it might have, it's, it's, it was released by Troma. And um, the director's name is Stuart Simpson. So if you look those up, you'll be able to find it somewhere. But um, I could do a whole an hour on that just by itself. But I'll just leave you with that. The Demons Among Us. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, let me remind all of you, for those who are interested, uh, Ridiculum, a humorous pulp sci-fi classic uh, anthology, is currently available on Amazon and 99 cents on Kindle or free if you're a Prime member. And for those of you who are in the Phoenix area, we will be at Phoenix Fan Fusion next month. So, and we will have Ridiculum on the table along with the butt steak deal. Yeah, yeah. But well, maybe maybe Richard should sign those before we go to the convention. <laughs> you can sell signed yeah, well, editions. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Richard to sign them. Unfortunately, he can't break himself away <laughs> to be there. Now I want butt steak. <laughs> now you want butt steak. <laughs> you see butt steak. I have I have no I have pizza come I have pizza I'm making but thank oh, you guys very much and um, I hope we can do this again sometime I had a lot of fun hope I didn't bore people too much with my yammering no 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 oh. people liked it all right good we'll bring take you, it easy know, we should bring you back on to do this maybe sure, like if you want if you like definitely I'd love to. all right everyone bye bye everyone thank you good night.